by the time Cyclone Debbie started tossing chunks of coral larger than small cars ashore, as she tore through the Whitsundays tourism mecca in March. Concerns about the health of the Great Barrier Reef were already well in the danger zone. A second consecutive year of coral bleaching was underway and the overhead were showing widespread damage to a large area south of the reefs that had been most affected the previous year. The results of fading and cyclone damage continued to arrive, but the official line of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority is that coral mortality in the northern section of the reef widening last year has been worse than originally planned. The alarming statistic of the head of the bleaching work group, Terry Hughes, is that 50% of the shallow reef cover of the entire reef has died in both bleaching events. Drill down and there is a more complex story to tell. Some scientists question how accurate and representative post-bleaching surveys have been. It was the selection of scientific sites has made the sampling approach too much on surface corals and aerial surveys however. Few argue the damage done has been widespread and is cause for concern. There are two big tables in play. One of them is the role of climate change in making the widening events more likely, more often. The other is whether the size of the Great Barrier Reef will continue to give you protection and resilience not found in other parts of the world.